an hour, Tony Schumacher's top fuel dragster disintegrates. Two thousand was a big year for Tony Schumacher. The thirty-one-year-old drag racer was at the top of his game. A thirty light, yeah. He was out at me. Tony had won the championship in 1999, and we were on track to win the championship that year. They were the team to beat. Tony had recently recorded the fastest speed in the history of drag racing, 330 miles per hour. We were by far the speed team. Everybody knew that we ran the fastest speed ever in drag racing. On October 7th, Tony was pumped up about the championship qualifying race in Memphis, Tennessee. His wife, Kara, cheered him on. I went to see Tony in the staging lanes before he took his car up. He just looked so perfect. Propelled by an 8,000 horsepower engine, Tony's car accelerates to over 300 miles per hour in little more than four seconds. It looked like a perfect run up until about 1,000 feet. At high speeds, the car's rear wing provides thousands of pounds of downward pressure. That's all that keeps the tires on the ground. At 320 miles per hour, the rear wing broke off. The driver's pod separated from the car and repeatedly smashed into the ground. Kara's heart stopped when she saw the crash. I just remember running down the stairs at the Memphis Motorsports Park, and I was just sprinting toward the finish line. The crash was horrendous. The car just came apart terribly. Initially, he was totally unconscious. Um, from what I could tell, he was not breathing. He basically looked completely lifeless. I thought he was dead. Tony had to be cut out of the roll cage, and to everyone's amazement, he was still alive. Kara yelled that she loved him as he was rushed to a waiting helicopter. Not knowing if it was the end or not for Tony, I just wanted to give him peace. If those were his last moments, I wanted him. I just wanted him to be at peace, and I wanted him to know that I loved him. Tony was flown 14 miles to the Elvis Presley Memorial Trauma Center. In the ER, Tony was stabilized. X-rays revealed serious injuries to his legs. He had a broken left leg, which they casted in a temporary cast and he had a fractured right heel. Many dislocated fingers, broken toes, a few lacerations in his left leg. Then, Tony was given a CAT scan. Surprisingly, there were no fractures in his neck or spine, but there still could be soft tissue damage that wouldn't show up on a CT scan. Tony's left leg was broken in seven places, including at his ankle. That injury alone might prevent Tony from ever racing again. Kara immediately had him transferred to Ortho Indy in Indianapolis. Ortho Indy treats race car drivers specifically for their injuries. Orthopedic surgeon Dr. Tim Weber was called in. Anytime that you're taking care of a race car driver and he has a foot and ankle injury, uh, it can be very severe. Uh, e even uh, a moderate injury there is something that could be career threatening. To think a little more. To Tony was rushed into surgery that night. We went ahead and fixed his ankle by realigning the bone, getting it back in position, and then stabilizing that or fixing it with a plate and some screws to hold it in that position during the time that it healed. As soon as the anesthesia wore off, Tony was in tremendous pain. But all he wanted was to try to race again. Tony is a very, very tough guy. 
Racers are a totally different breed. They're fearless, but oftentimes these people want to drive right away. They want to go out and be carried out to their car. As long as they can sit in their car, they'll drive. It looked like Tony would survive, but they didn't know if he would ever be able to handle a race car. He was just not able to even get downstairs. He was also plagued by debilitating headaches and dizziness. He was going through black moods when he was home because I think he knew where his body needed to be, but it just wouldn't get him there. His doctors couldn't identify what was causing his pain. He was experiencing spins at night, so we knew there was some head injury that we had not addressed yet. Then, a friend suggested a chiropractor. Tony's leg and bruises had healed, but he was still incapacitated. When Tony first came to the office, he was complaining about having headaches. Uh, he had discomfort in his neck, in his middle, middle back, in his lower back. By taking x-rays and doing specific calculations, Dr. Marshall Dickholz determined the exact adjustment that needed to be made to Tony's top vertebra. What we found with him is that his body was leaning off to the left and one hip was actually four degrees lower on one side. By doing a simple adjustment on Tony, Dr. Dickholz could restore balance in Tony's body. Patients lying on their side, there's a very light and subtle pressure that they feel on the side of their neck. Great, Tony. Now come on up. And after several treatments, Tony Schumacher finally Let's felt like himself again. The drag racing champion who'd survived one of racing's most stunning crashes was on the road to recovery at last. It was amazing. It's one of those things where I sat up, everything was gone. No pain, color was back in my face, and I thought to myself, that's like magic. It really could have been a career-ending injury. And for Tony, that was unthinkable even after what happened on that terrifying Saturday in Memphis. I woke up that morning, I was in a great mood. I just felt like a champ. I got in that race car and I felt to myself, there is no possible way that we can lose this world championship. I was on probably one of my best runs ever. The wing was less than a year old, not even halfway to its scheduled replacement. It was made of an aluminum alloy covered in carbon fiber. But where it connected to the strut, it simply buckled under the pressure. The wing internally came apart, then folded up on the car and came off the back of the car. After the accident, they started making the wing with titanium instead, a heavier but much stronger metal. With the incredible acceleration of these cars, any mechanical failure can have enormous impact. That car accelerates from 0 to 100 in less than a second in under 60 feet. That's more acceleration than the space shuttle astronauts or the fighter pilots off the aircraft carriers. I remember just being intensely loud. Tony only survived because he was strapped into a protective pod made of a super strong steel-based alloy. The rest of the dragster was actually designed to break apart, dissipating the force of impact. The pod was all that was left, and it broke the left bottom of the pod off, which broke my left leg. Probably very, very fortunate I didn't lose a leg. Amazingly, just one month after his cast came off, Tony went back to racing. People say, how do you get back in a car? I get in the car because I love the good times. Is there a risk? Absolutely. But winning, being around a team of people that are capable of doing something other people can't do is just awesome. To me, that means way, way more than the risk. Four years later, Tony Schumacher was again crowned the Top Fuel World Champion. I'm still going to drive for a while. I love what I do.